What's good, gang? Me again. So, Google does really well with its earnings estimates, smashes it out of the park, currently trading 5% up in the out-of-hours market. So a nice little gap up in Google is expected from the market open today. But what do we have? Well, we've got Meta and we've got Microsoft that are too are going to be declaring their earnings. I believe it's at the close of the marketplace, but what's that going to do for Bitcoin? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin is doing very, very well. Now it is trailing just so close towards its all-time high and spirits are high. Well, why, why now? Why are you driving here now? Anyways, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and break it all down for you. we got big news coming out today for the ADP non-farm employment change. Of course, China is going to be declaring its manufacturing data as well. And China's not looking too good, man. They want to start pumping more liquidity into the marketplace. 10 trillion yen. That's around roughly $1.4 trillion USD. And it's just to get in investors excited about wanting to invest in China. But look at oil's price. It's not exactly doing much now, is it? And if oil isn't going up, that means China isn't consuming anything. So what we're going to do today, guys, just break down the environment, see exactly what we can expect from Bitcoin going into the New York Open. And I won't be able to do a live this evening, guys, because I will be on my travels. But nonetheless, we'll be back to it all tomorrow again, Thursday, for that New York flavor, just to work out what Bitcoin's going to end up doing heading into the most anticipated data the non-farm payrolls. Well, you thought it was the election? Nah, man, they ain't do these birds really wound me up. I don't know if you could be hearing that stupid bird. But anyways, let's get with the program, gang. So we get it all started off with what's happened and what's going to happen. Yesterday, Jolt's job openings came in 7.44 million. Hmm, is that a good figure? No, not really, because they expected it to be a little bit higher, which means that there should be more jobs available. Remember, the Federal Reserve has been a bit reluctant to cut the interest rates. It might have just got another reason for it. 7.44 million is showing that there is a little bit of a reduction in the jobs opening. So that means that not many people are taking on work, but not just that, not many companies are actually offering the work. So that's going to be another trigger for the Federal Reserve to say, you know what, we might actually have to cut the interest rates because if they're not offering the work, then that might mean they're trying to scale back and protect their cash flows and they're not happy to invest in people to work with them. With that being said, today we've got the ADP non-farm employment change coming out. That too is also expecting a reduction in the amount of labor that is being offered to people. But what you've got to also understand is the last time we had positive uh, negative readings on the JOLTS job openings and the ADP non-farm employment change, then the non-farm employment data came out and and completely swept the board and everyone was surprised with the reading. So it's going to be interesting to see if this data today does actually marry up to the non-farm payrolls because the non-farm payrolls on Friday, they're looking for a drop, like an aggressive drop lower, which could induce the actual unemployment rate to go up. Do you know what will happen if the unemployment rate goes down again? Oh my gosh, it will be madness. The Fed will most definitely not cut the interest rates. If anything, they'd probably try and pause. What, could el what else could impact the marketplace? Well, look at this. Elon, as much as he might be backing Trump, he's a little bit concerned about Trump's policies. Now, let's before we go into this, what was Trump like before? In front of you is this chart. This chart shows you when Trump was in power, what was going on. Everything that he signed, all the policies and what have you, they're all here from he suspends non-immigrant worker visa. He's got um, signs the Hong Kong Autonomy Act. And then you've got this $900 billion relief program. He had to pick up all the business from COVID. And then, of course, straight after that $900 billion relief program, he steps down as president in 2021. Now, Biden steps into the scene and you can see that the stock market has been going up, which is the blue line. And then it starts to correct ever so slightly. And then under Biden, everything seems to be going up as much as people are like, hold on a second, what has Biden done? Well, you can see it's evident that the marketplace has been going up. But what you've got to take into consideration is this, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about interest rates. That's all it is. How much money can the bank borrow from another bank to another bank? How's it all going to work? What's the rate of interest? What's their return? How can they push that onto their consumers? And this is what Elon's concerned about. If Trump comes into play and he does start putting tariffs in into companies overseas and of course countries overseas, primarily China, what's going to happen? Well, people are going to consume that. People are going to absorb that. The consumer is going to be the one paying for it. As much as it's great in terms of trade for the US to put tariffs on countries overseas, yeah, the US is making more money in principle, but it's the people in the US that are going to be footfront in the cost. It's going to hurt the economy. Inflation will go up. And all of the work that the Federal Reserve has been doing is probably going to get unwinded and we're going to end up going back to square one and we don't want a repeat of 1990. 
which we said in yesterday's video, was the bond massacre, where the Federal Reserve did a U-turn on its policy. They did the opposite of what everyone was expecting, and that created a crash in the bonds market. So given with the not the instability of what's going on in the marketplace because everything looks like it's doing pretty well in the market if we just quickly go over to here you can see that in terms of bitcoin she's been doing very well ladies and gentlemen so stick around because i'm going to be giving you some levels on bitcoin but what i want you to draw attention to is google google is up five percent in the out of hours markets look at that currently trading at around the 178894 zone it's currently filled a gap over here in the chart and that's only because of them smashing their estimates today we actually have microsoft and meta declaring the earnings and it does say over here with the moon that it's going to be in the after hours so that's going to have a big impact on the nasdaq and the s p but mainly cryptocurrency as well because if the scene across the board is that everyone is pumped for bitcoin can we justify that logic well let's just look at it in this perspective here the bhutan government is effectively selling bitcoin on binance and that's causing speculation well come on guys it's not exactly a lot of bitcoin now is it in respect to what's going on in the bigger picture in front of you are the orders and these are limit orders that have been placed above to sell and below to buy it might challenge you if you are new to the idea of buying and selling but the logic says that this is where limit buy orders are and this is where limit sell orders are we are seeing a lot of interest coming into play maybe this could be that the Bhutan government is effectively thinking, you know what, we can make some profit on this move because it seems like everything is pumping for the election. Happy days. So when we go back into this order flow, we can say to ourselves, are we expecting yet another move to the upside in Bitcoin? Well, when you look at the Bitcoin on the higher time frames, just go over to the daily time frame because I know the holders are going to be wondering what to do next. Holders are going to be left with a critical question. Do they hold? Now, it looks like everything is primed to go to the upside for Bitcoin. And we look at the chart and we think a breakout is happening. Spirits are high. Be very careful, guys. The reason I'm saying being careful is because when we're approaching all-time highs, it's consistent with triggering psychology in the marketplace. What do I mean? Well, yesterday's video, we spoke about that there's a lot of traders over here that are stuck in break-even positions, but they are also going to be having to make a decision as to whether or not they hold on to those positions. So that means the people that purchased over here at the all-time high, that's true, because the only reason that they could purchase at that high is because someone was selling at that point. If I zoom out on this chart right here and go to the higher time frames, go to the 12-hour chart, you can see over here, this is where liquidity was. Look, if you zoom in, bloody hell, that's a little bit slow. You can see that people have been buying and selling in this range. And people bought loads of Bitcoin on this breakout to the all-time high. Because the only reason they were able to buy is because there was someone there prepared to sell. And that's important for us. Now, those same people, and if, it's, if, it, if you are one of those people that did buy at this all-time high, you've waited since March to effectively get back to break even, you're going to have to make a decision. Do you retain the position or do you take something off the table just so you can get an insight into whether or not this move is going to validate Bitcoin's move to the upside? Because only a few weeks, well, a couple of weeks ago, everyone was like, Bitcoin is done, Bitcoin is done, Bitcoin is done. Now, what you've got to understand is this accumulation inside this range right here has effectively led Bitcoin to move higher. We're not seeing the breakout of the all-time high just yet. Now, the data today could lead us towards the breakout. So if you are one of those individuals that do have positions in Bitcoin and you're trying to toy with the idea as to whether or not you should hold, well, you've got to understand Meta earnings, Microsoft earnings, Amazon, Apple, it's all coming in this week. Non-farm payrolls at the end of the week, start of a new monthly candle, the, the elections. You are effectively holding during volatility. Now, in our eyes, we're thinking, yeah, baby, Bitcoin to the moon. But just accept that there will be snap reversals, which means that price will come down because the market will naturally gravitate to an area of interest where people are prepared to buy. That means when prices are dropping, they're going to capitalize on retail being very optimistic right now. And of course, this is where smart money comes in and starts effectively making those people pay for buying at the highest point. So just make sure that when you're going into your trading or you're investing, you are thinking about things logically. If you've got a profit, take some. If you don't want to take anything, accept that the volatility is going to come into the charts. 
Don't batter yourself and be upset with yourself if you witness Bitcoin making a full correction back down below the 70k zone. You know that the week left has got a lot of volatility to effectively bring that back up. If you are new to the channel, guys, I hope it has made sense to you. It is going to be a big day, so just make sure that you are monitoring your positions. Don't put too much risk down. Don't use too much leverage. The whole point is to stay in the game. And I'll be checking in with you all going into tomorrow, okay? Mad love and respect, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe on the way out, and I'll be checking in with you all then. I've said checking in with you twice now. What the f Catch you soon, gang. Peace.